Hi guys, welcome to this week's tutorial. Um, I did a little bunny rabbit um, the beginning of Easter. I'm sure you will uh, would have seen the time-lapse video that I placed on YouTube. Now, I've been asked by a couple of my YouTube subscribers if I could turn this into a little tutorial. So because I drew this um, bunny for fun, I will make it available to my YouTubers as well as my patrons. And I am not going to make this too long a tutorial. I'm only going to spend about 12 minutes on um, doing this tutorial. Um, and it should give you guys a good idea of how I approach the entire thing. So the materials that I used were um, was my Archer's watercolor paper, which is a 220 GSM paper. Um, and it's a smooth one and I use my Prismacolor Premier pencils along with my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils and I use my R Spectrum solvent to blend it all together. So um, the reference photo can be found on morgfile.com so that's where you can get a whole lot of beautiful royalty free photos um, with the royalty free obviously being that you can use those photos um, as reference photos to drawings or however you want really as long as you aren't using the actual photo and trying to make a profit, profit from it you can draw from the photo and do whatever you want with the drawing so that's morgfile.com it's actually a um, a website that I use a lot for a lot of my drawings that big Jaguar that I did um, that was from morgfile.com and I found that a lot of their photos are really good. There are some photos on there um, that aren't that great, but the fact that a lot of them um, are good and they are all free um, does make it quite nice for us because I know that buying stock photos and that can end up being quite expensive and we don't really want to do that. But another great place to get um, royalty-free photographs for $10 is um, wildlifereferencephotos.com and they have amazing photographs so I think $10 is worth um, paying for a very good reference especially if you're going to do a giant piece so um, anyways enough of the babbling this is the tutorial for my bunny rabbit okay so the first thing I started with on the bunny rabbit was the eye the eye is pretty much just black with a little highlight in it so I used my sharp Prismacolor pencil and my sharp um, Faber Castell Polychromos pencil because a Polychromos pencil can get to a much sharper point so I just did that for sort of outlining the eye. I added a little bit of greys and whites in the eye and that's going to create the illusion of having a highlight in the eye and it's going to make it look three-dimensional. There's really not much detail in the eye so you don't have to worry too much about getting any detail. Only draw what you see. Pretend that it's not an eye and it's just a shape and it will become very very easy. So I um, am using many, many colors right now. So I'm going to gradually but very softly um, start layering um, colors of fur. I'm going to make sure that I'm going in the direction of fur. I'm using tiny little strokes and I'm drawing all those little hairs. And at the same time with using all these different colors together, you're creating those different values and you're creating the illusion of having soft fur. Now, this is a going to be a time-consuming process. You want to very gently add these colors. And there, you saw I quickly blended it with the solvent. And that's just going to mush all those colors together and make it look like you've got darker colors behind other colors. And it's just going to give it that soft look. So moving on to the ears, I'm doing the same thing. Everything I am doing in the, the right direction so that it, it looks like I'm actually drawing little pieces of fur. And I'm adding a lot of color and paying attention to all the colors that are there and trying to add as many colors as I can because there's so many different values in the fur. You don't have to worry about um, fine details, but if you add those colors, it's going to um, bring out those details regardless. Okay, so moving on to the ear, I'm adding a lot of different colors like pink and purple and um, just also creating little strokes so that it looks like the the inside of the ear is quite furry um, itself so working in the same direction it's it's just a matter of paying attention to your reference photo and trying to take note of all the colors now make sure that um, one tip that I can give you is if you're going to do your outlines in graphite 
Um, by the time you get to the edges, erase those graphite lines first before you color in the edges because you can see that the edges of the ears are very, very light fur and you don't want any of that graphite pencil to come through and make it look like an outline because it's going to be such a soft, subtle color over the background that it's it's going to be, a it has to be a very smooth transition and almost look close to being white because you... You want it to look like it's little um, pieces of fur that's over the white background and it's almost like the light is catching them. So you don't want to have that outline um, make it look like it's copied and pasted onto the paper, if that makes any sense. So you could see that after I blended it with the solvent, the colors in those ears just popped right out and it has really made it look quite realistic already. I did with the really white pieces before I put any solvent down, I did use my white wax based pencil to create those really white highlighted areas first. And then when you put the solvent down or any further colors on top of it, it's not going to go over the white because you've already pressed that white wax into the paper. So you don't have to worry about those highlights being hidden later on if you decide to go over it with more, um, with more color. So with the face, again, working in the right direction of fur, I am putting in a number of colors. I'm blending it in with my solvent to give it that really soft look. And you can start seeing that the bunny's face is already at getting a very nice three-dimensional feel to it. Um, and I am using very soft strokes and I'll be adding more detail to the face later. So getting to the body of the bunny rabbit, I am using some gray tones. The right side of the rabbit has got a lot of light shining on it and I think it's creating a very, very light effect. So you want to be careful that you don't go too dark around the lighter areas. So one thing you can do is work all your darker areas first and actually completely leave out the lighter areas until last. And then you can come in with your grays and your very light values to sort of give it a texture because you don't want to just leave areas completely white. The bunny rabbit I felt was very, very, um, almost like a light beigey brown. So I wanted to add more of those red colors in to bring it more to life. And that made such a difference in the face when I started adding more of those reddish tones. Um, I also used that to create more value. And I very gently press with my black pencil. It's so gentle that you may as well use a darker gray pencil because you don't want it to become too black and make it look sort of flat and it's very hard if you're going to come in with such a soft look with the um with black you don't want to press too hard ever even when you're doing the whiskers don't do the whiskers in black do the whiskers in a light gray because if you do the whiskers in black it's going to end up looking too thick and it's just going to stand out too much and look unrealistic so make the whiskers really really subtle and soft when you do get to the whiskers so I'm creating the shadows around the foot in the back and I didn't move my camera down so I'm very sorry about that. I think I'll move it down soon. All I'm doing is using a black pencil and gently creating that shadow under and between the pores and that is going to give it a three-dimensional look and make it look like it's just sitting on something and you've got the shadow underneath it. Um, so there I erased the graphite line and then I went in with a very light yellow Prismacolor pencil and just kind of filled that in so that I remember where that edge is because when you erase the line you obviously cannot see it anymore. So immediately after you erase the line use a very light pencil to fill it in and sort of define that area around the chest. So now I'm using a very light grey around all the edges so that I can see exactly where the edges are. And make sure that I never go too dark because I want it to be very, very soft against the background. And there's a lot of light reflecting on those areas of fur, so you don't want to end up making it too dark. So now I'm using a beige Prismacolor pencil and I'm very gently just filling in the areas that have that brown. And then I'm going to gradually build up the different areas of value using different colors. I've even used a dark green in here. So don't be shy with how you feel you want to use your colors. Don't be afraid of using greens and blues and, and all sorts of colors in your work. Because if you look at your color wheel, a lot of those colors work well together. So 
um, don't be afraid. You obviously aren't going to use a very bright blue against a very bright orange. So you want to just, you know, use colors that are close to each other and that you know are going to work together. And if you are using browns, um, dark browns and dark grays, then you want to use your purples and your blues to complement those colors. If you're using um, oranges and yellows, then you could come in with your reds and your pinkish tones to complement those colors. So, um, like I said, don't be afraid of using those colors. And my bunny, I, I like using a bit of red later on because I wanted it to enhance those light orange values because I felt that it was just looking a bit too, too beigey sort of light orange. So with those greys that I put down, they pop out now that I've used the solvent and the fur is already starting to look really, really soft. You just feel like you want to stroke the bunny already. You can see that it's made a big difference creating the fur in such a gentle, soft way. So I didn't go crazy with my dark colors. I really, really wanted to put my light colors in and subtly fill in darker values not with a dark color but with a darker color so that i could see where i would have to make a darker later on so keep um now i'm getting to a stage where i'm happy to fill in my darker values i know where the edges of the bunny are because i've created those soft edges using light colors and now i feel like i can come in with the darker sort of colors to create more of a texture and define those shadows that you have by the back leg and behind like the sort of chest area you want to define those areas a bit better so always using very very soft strokes and never ever use a heavy hand um, the only time that if you want to use a heavy hand you can use it for the black around the paws right underneath and that's okay if that area looks very flat because it's a shadow it's a dark area it's got no um, sort of definition or detail but everything else needs to be very very soft so you can see now with how far I've gotten with the fur, it sort of has a crayon look. And this is where the solvent comes in really handy because it makes it all look really smooth. So when you get that crayon look, don't be afraid of it. That is what's going to happen until you put the solvent down to soften it all out and to make those colors just blend in nicely with one another. So now I am using a white Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil and I'm going to go over all the areas that I want very, very white and want highlighted so i'm gonna fill in the highlighted pieces of fur i'm even gonna do this over the entire body of the rabbit um you could see sorry i didn't show where i blended with the solvent but the fur is much softer when it, than what it looked a second ago that crayon look is gone so I feel like I still need to add darker values. So that's what I'm doing now. And then the what's nice about using your wax-based pencils and your polychromous pencils together, and by doing such soft layers, you are allowing yourself to add those details right in the end. So once I get to the point where I wanna define this bunny towards the end, I can um, use my white wax based pencils and create all those different highlighted pieces of fur very, very last. And it's difficult to do that if you use a heavy hand because then you won't be able to layer your lighter colors on top of your darker colors. So by using so many soft layers and adding the solvent, letting it dry, adding more layers and adding the solvent and continuing on like that, you're allowing yourself room to add details later on. So this is where I'm coming in with my white pencil and creating all those top layers of fur. I'm, not, I'm jumping into the darker shadows. Oh, I'm blending first with my solvent and then those colors are starting to look right. That's the way I want the colors. And now I'm coming in with my white luminance pencil and a light gray um, Prismacolor pencil. Both of them will work equally the same. So, And I'm creating those highlights of the fur on top of pretty much the entire bunny rabbit and that's going to give it a very soft look so if you have a look at that you can see how using the white pencil is just adding those extra pieces of light fur on top and it's just making it look really really soft and then the more you look at it the more you can see the kind of details that you need to add and um which colors you want to enhance and you want to see that you can bring out those extra last minute details with um, 
with adding those extra colors but the more you progress with your layering the more you can see what extra is needed and um, what's missing and you can feel free to add all the extras that um, you want to add to it you, it doesn't have to be exactly like the artwork you can make it real funky colors if you want or you can um, you can do whatever you want it's art you can just be creative but the key to getting this really soft look is to gradually build up the darker values don't go dark first and then work lighter like a lot of my drawings i do like to do the darkest areas first but when you want to create such soft gentle um subtle fur on something that isn't very dark um don't use your dark values first. Use your mid-tones for your dark values and your light tones. And then towards the end, you will start adding in your real dark tones. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.